morning and welcome back to my course on narrative mode and fiction. Today we are going to discuss our uh, module 6 tragedy and comic absurdity in novel. We are going to understand tragedy and comic absurdity in novel in the context of our discussion of uh, Gustav Flaubert's Madame Bovary. So, uh, we need to understand Flaubert's uh, context that uh, gave birth to that produced uh, this uh, seminal text, uh, a, a work that was uh, understood as quite ahead of its time, which has uh, received uh, historically different kinds of reactions, both negative and positive. Uh, so, it has undergone uh, a, a, a lot of criticism, it has undergone legal trials for the Pyrenecist depiction of the female protagonist uh, Emma Bovary, uh, but then it was also understood as a, uh, a great, uh, a, a classical work which set its own standard, which uh, set its own benchmark. So, let us start with uh, what Flaubert uh, says uh, about uh, the, the writings uh, in the modern times. Uh, I quote Flaubert, he says, do not speak to me about modern times with respect to the grandiose, with respect to the grandiose. There is not enough there to satisfy the imagination of the phaetonist, the phaetonist of the lowest order. So, when we talk of a phaetonist, we are thinking of a newspaper uh, that has uh, on its side some gossip, some gossip stories. He is talking about a plot that uh, emerges from Phaeton, Phaeton or uh, the gossip stories, the, something that is uh, uh, viewed as uh, you know part of little tradition when we are uh, standardizing uh, literature in terms of traditional benchmark and we are trying to uh, look at literature in terms of little tradition and great and tradition. Of course, Phaeton, when we talk of Phaeton, we are talking of little tradition of pulp fiction of gossip stories, uh, which has actually, which is, uh, you know, physically and metaphorically part of the margins vis-a-vis -vis, uh, you, you know, the facts, the, the, the facts that we read in newspaper. Now, Mikhail Bakhtin, we have already spoken of Mikhail Bakhtin uh, in our discussion of epic and novel. Mikhail Bakhtin uh, says that every discourse places itself through a negotiation following an array of social struggle. So, this can be translated into Flaubert's matrix from where he writes uh, Madame Bovary. Like I said, we need to understand the larger historical context, the larger undercurrents that gave birth to. Uh, a remarkable work such as Madame Bovary. Uh, Madame Bovary's period is marked by revolutions and counter revolutions that, uh, that uh, shape its chronotope. When we talk of chronotope, this is also a term we have discussed before um, in, in, our, uh, in, in, in the context of uh, 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 you know, discussing genres, discussing epic and novel, we have talked about chronotope. We have uh, discussed chronotope when talking about Don Quixote, Cervantes's Don Quixote. So, chronotope is basically the intersection of time and space and a reality that emerges out of this intersection, this specific intersection, uh, a history of turbulence in France and then uh, fomenting insurgences through romantic movement as well as the art for art movement and the beginnings of realist movement are some of the happenings uh, you know of early 19th century uh, soon after the french revolution which uh, influence flaubert's writing flaubert's thoughts and his way of uh, looking at uh, human crisis human existence the question of class as well as the question of um, personal relationships and romance. Flaubert departs from the 19th century authors that had uh, cut off from the means of production. So, uh, 
he is writing Madame Bovary at a time when the thriving, uh, you know, uh, tradition is, um, you know, drawing on the thriving tradition, literary tradition uh, greatly draws on romantic movement. Uh, romanticism is the uh, prevailing uh, tradition that informs writings at that time. He is uh, falling back. On the other hand, we see Flaubert is falling back on the notion of labor for writing. His true obsession was with style and with form, with the stylistic uh, features of writing in which uh, he continually uh, tried to seek some sort of perfection. And we understand that as uh, we see Gustave Flaubert uh, recasting and reading aloud uh, his drafts to himself. So, Flaubert also draws on the Marxist uh, claim that the economic paradigm has its own dynamics of operating. As we know, Marx uh, posits that matter has its own dynamicity uh, and uh, it is at the center, it, the, the category of uh, matter uh, is at the center which uh, around which other categories, uh, you know, such as the philosophical, the political, the cultural sense of understanding revolves. So, matter in other words is the pivot around which uh, other factors, uh, you know, move or which uh, influences other factors. It is at the heart of uh, all the uh, discourses, right. So, so, Flaubert is influenced by this Marxian claim that the economic paradigm has its dynamics of operating and the social configuration as well as cultural and political expressions are in, in many ways incumbent on uh, mode of production and mode and that mode of production is the central category. So, if we look at the female protagonist rather the protagonist of uh, Flaubert's novel Madame Bovary, the namesake uh, we see Emma Bovary, uh, the title of the novel being her namesake. We would note that her life oscillates between the bourgeois peasant's life and the aristocrat's life and through such oscillation, through such moving between uh, different class realities, different social realities. Madame Bovary is trying to substantiate her identity at a convenient space between uh, two very uh, discrete uh, cosmos, two uh, very discrete uh, uh, ways of living and uh, the kind of lack of a smooth transition between these two class realities, two different worldviews. Uh, 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 frustrates her goals. We will also see that her fr the, the frustration that uh, 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 that that uh, builds within her when she belonging to the bourgeois class wants to become part of aristocracy but cannot. Uh, that frustration, inability, uh, informs the entire narrative. It becomes the uh, propellant force for the rest of the narrative. That is what keeps the narrative going, the frustration inside uh, Emma, right. So, Flaubert is particularly, uh, you know, Marxian in his uh, depiction of uh, Emma Bovary, who uh, thinks that her body is a private property. Sitting in her time, uh, this is uh, something uh, remarkable and uh, too uh, radical to think. A woman considering her body as a property and experimenting with that body, uh, be becoming profligate with that body. Uh, uh, and, and you know, uh, this is uh, this type of thinking by Emma foils against its contemporary social ethos, where uh, no such concept of social positions of women decoupled from their male relations uh, can be found. So, uh, at the time where uh, Emma is inhabiting, uh, the, the time space that Emma is inhabiting, uh, there is no such, uh, you know, concept of a uh, female possessing, you know, the material property in terms of lands and houses, but she is born with a body and she possesses that, she wants to experiment with that, she wants to uh, kind of uh, bargain the body 
and uh, you know uh, get what she wants out of life that is too ahead of her time and that is why critics have cl claimed that uh, the, the story has a, almost a pornographic uh, depiction of Emma. So, post French revolution uh, the bourgeoisie we need to understand the background of this remarkable work by Flaubert uh, where we see that post French revolution the bourgeois the bourgeoisie the bourgeoisie gained many civil and political rights which allowed them to grow economically through commerce and the bourgeoisie was characterized as wealthy and materialistic in fact we see that Flaubert uh, himself is a uh, part of the bourgeoisie tradition he is born within this fold but he had a great dislike for the bourgeoisie although um, he himself like I said was part of the educated and the elite he saw them as conservative as unsophisticated we could associate a, a word such as philistine that would go hand in hand with the kind of bourgeoisie that uh, Flaubert wants to uh, depict uh, in this novel and um, the, the traits that he wants to stay away from uh, something that we find in his uh, personal letters in his letters and his per other personal writings. Uh, so, uh, the, the crisis of the bourgeoisie, the limitations of the bourgeoisie is something that keeps coming back in uh, Mother Bovary. Now, when talking about uh, Mother Bovary, we need to theorize this novel in terms of uh, uh, a term coined by Georg Hegel is a term uh, zeitgeist. zeitgeist uh, meaning uh, the world spirit right it refers to an idealistic pattern that influences uh, our ethical political uh, philosophical and cultural understandings all these different categories are uh, you know uh, influenced by and speaks to the spirit of the age basically zeitgeist is the spirit of the age each age has its own spirit according to Hegel. So, unlike Marx, uh, I, I spoke about Marx a while back where Marx posits that economy is the chief category that defines everything else. Uh, Hegel would go on to say that uh, the world spirit is at the heart of all kinds of discourses and it influences uh, cultural, social, uh, philosophical expressions, thinking and so forth. So, since Flaubert's contemporary reality dwells on the fervor of romantic movement, um, a kind of uh, sentimentality that uh, the, the society enjoyed at that time, sentimentality as reflected in through through the reflected through um, the novels, artworks, characters, uh, we can see that his novel appears as a critic of such uh, and, and such a dominant tradition, romantic uh, tradition and it uh, defies thereby the mandates of the spirit of his contemporary times, the spirit of the age, the geist in Hegelian terms. So, geist uh, supposes that any idea, a creative person's idea is linked to the contemporary reality. Quite in contrast, we see that uh, Flaubert is talking about his, uh, you know, cre creating a character which cannot be found in his contemporary time, in his contemporary society, which is why he is all the more criticized. He, his work is all the more misunderstood. So, it is definitely a work ahead of its time, having a caustic a very sharp impact on the sentimentality of romanticism and uh, is appreciated only at the dawn of realism, the movement that follows romanticism. Flaubert is often considered as a, a preeminent representative of the, the realist tradition in literature. So, literary realism was a 19th century movement that saw its origins in France with the painter Gustave uh, Courbet. Uh, realism spread to literature 
and uh, Flaubert became a prominent leader in the movement. So, Courbet like we see is a painter, a realist painter and Flaubert has his, uh, has, uh, his thoughts uh, translated in the form of writings. Uh, realism is a literary movement that focuses on depicting the mundane everyday life of common people in terms of uh, all the minute details. So, it focuses on, uh, the, on, on verisimilitude, on a loyalty to uh, you know transcribing the reality outside onto or, or into the artwork and uh, realism was in a way a rejection of its uh, preceding tradition, a rejection of romanticism. Uh, and uh, romanticism like we know thrived uh, during the 19th century uh, uh, and it was uh, eventually replaced by realism, the realist movement. So, Flaubert after writing Mother Bovary was scandalized as a panicist who had uh, portrayed a pornographic sketch of his protagonist uh, Emma and hence uh, he was castigated by the contemporary readers. Uh, whose horizon of expectations did not match with this uh, piece of work. Now, we have to just come back a little bit. We, uh, we have already spoken about horizon of expectations, but just hearkening back, um, horizon of expectations is a term devised by critic Hans Robert Yaus and Yaus uh, describes uh, this term in the, as, as a context, right? a context that shapes our expectation what an audience, what a reader is going to expect out of art uh, within a given generation uh, is once again shaped by the spirit of that age uh, within which the work is produced. So, um, the readers try to uh, appreciate and, and uh, analyze a work within the given context, within the given uh, and how this work is going to interact uh, with uh, the reader's mind is uh, defined by the horizon of expectations. The context within which a given generation of readers understand a work, right? So, for a text to survive in a given society, the relationship of author with readers should be, con should be conditioned by horizon of expectations. If the horizon of expectation and the writing kind of uh, resonate, if uh, they, they resonate, uh, they, they re the work becomes, the work becomes a hit, the work becomes uh, widely accepted by the audience. If the expectation uh, during that period of time uh, does not match with a creative work, the work remains uh, dormant or uh, it, it, the, the work uh, is not remembered and it certainly does not, it, it struggles to become part of the canon. Uh, so, if a, a given audience at a given period and a given space does not accept a work so much, um, it cannot for example, be canonized, it uh, stays uh, in the fringes, it struggles to uh, become a part of the mainstream. Uh, readers memory. So, survival of a text is not an automatic process, it is determined by its uh, demand and acceptance by the immediate society, what the work wants to say and how. So, the work has its own expectations, its own demands and whether those uh, demands, whether those uh, you know uh, statements made by the work uh, are uh, espoused are well taken by the immediate society. So, there are many instances, this is just moving away a little bit from uh, our core discussion to uh, talk about horizon of expectations. There are many instances we know where a work is ahead of its time like uh, Flaubert's Mother Bovary, um, where uh, we see uh, that the work at the time when it is produced is rejected by the public and later it comes back. Um, it, it, so, there is a boom later on in, in uh, subsequent decades it is you know uh, appreciated by uh, the, the next generation. So, so it is the current values of the society which decides whether work is going 
to uh, be accepted, uh, not accepted or outright rejected. Uh, so, in the case of Madame Bovary, uh, we see that the work appeared in 1856 in the form of a series and the book was uh, and, and the book involved Flaubert in a trial for uh, where he was accused of irreligion and immorality. Um, so, he has spent Flaubert has spent 5 good years to produce uh, Mother Bovary uh, which came out eventually in 1856 and following that Flaubert was subjected to an obscenity trial in France in 1857. Flaubert and the editors of La Hafu de Pahi had been uh, taken to court for outrage to public and religious morals and to morality. This was possibly because the story's plot was uh, understood as scandalous. Uh, it involved a woman having affairs as a way of recovering uh, the romance that she was missing in her marriage. She was having extramarital affair which was considered as irreligious and immoral. And so, uh, however, we see subsequently that on Flaubert's acquittal, the book enjoyed uh, what we can say in French success the scandal, uh, success the scandal or success precisely because of its uh, scandalous status. So, the scandal uh, added some stunt to the work and, uh, and so the work later on. Uh, the author's reputation was all the more established because he was, he was a scandalous author. So, the, re the reader is uh, able to experience the different uh, shades of or the different uh, emotions uh, that uh, Emma Bovary, the uh, protagonist feels. Uh, uh, so, the joy, agony and anguish of the protagonist uh, which have been uh, vividly uh, uh, discovered and uh, presented in the novel. Its themes such as the oppression and anguish of the woman in a uh, society that is uh, that works on patriarchal uh, values and standards uh, by and large remain pertinent uh, till date uh, although it was something written uh, back in 19th century. So, the purpose of tragedy uh, is to give an opportunity to the readers to feel we should not say uh, pity, but rather to, to uh, empathize with, uh, with Emma uh, for, for her failings. And uh, it, it uh, arouses this empathy in the reader, something that we would otherwise not feel. So, the reader is jolted out of uh, her customary moralism and frail superiority, the shoulds and shouldn'ts in a, matter, in, in a, in a manner that contemporary media typically uh, does not endorse. So, it fosters empathy in the reader essentially. In the summer of 1848, a brief article appeared in various Normandy newspapers and this article said the following, living in Rye, a small town south of Rouen, Delphine Telemere uh, of the age of 27 had become tired of the formalities of marriage. Under the strain of her uh, mounting debt from reckless purchases of clothing and household items, she took her own life. A small kid and a grieving husband were left behind by Madame de la Mer. Now, Flaubert, who was an aspiring author, was one of those who was reading this newspaper and he got so engrossed with this piece of news, uh, right, uh, that he used it precisely as the outline for the plot of his final work. Madame Bovary. So, we used a term, if I go back uh, to my first slide, uh, we use a term Phaetonist and uh, he is actually drawing on a Phaeton, a Phaeton, uh, a gossip news almost from newspaper, something that appears on the fringes of uh, news and uh, he is making use of this piece of news to write a classic, right. Uh, so, this Madame Delamere, a real life character, an adulteress from Rye, uh, 
uh, was adapted into Madame Bovary that we know today, widely known work. And this adulteress uh, from the made up town of Yonville, a very nuanced character. She uh, has many layers uh, added to her character, which uh, and, and different uh, uh, dimensions, different uh, adventures and misadventures that she uh, goes through, which spare her uh, any uh, kind of uh, precipitate uh, image uh, or, or simplistic judgment uh, out of a black and white morality tale. So, in other words, uh, when Madame de la Mer, uh, the adulteress uh, is uh, adapted into Madame Bovary, uh, the character is so complex and nuanced, her adventures and misadventures uh, layered uh, uh, female character who uh, defies, uh, whose, whose different dimensions defy a simple black and white morality tale. So, uh, the novel by Flaubert uh, depicts the conflicts and uh, struggles of marriage without actually uh, taking a side. So, this is where we are going back once again to the different theorists uh, such as Kundera, Milan Kundera and uh, E. M. Foster, all of them would uh, agree that any good novel uh, is a world where at the uh, at the heart of the discussion we have a thinking individual a thinking individual uh, who is an agent of his or her own acts uh, who who is acting in a flawed world who is living and acting uh, engaging uh, with a flawed uh, uh, surrounding and so morality doesn't hold uh, very well does not sit very well with the world of the novel. The world of the novel is more about experimentations, right. So, we see Emma's struggles with marriage and Flaubert here is uh, not taking any side either for or against the institution of marriage. As readers uh, witness the tragedy of Emma's uh, existence, they can only feel sympathy and uh, they can you know, understand, experience the brutality, absurdity and meaninglessness of life uh, for someone like Emma who is within the marital contract, but who aspires for other things, other unachievable uh, things in life. So, Flaubert purposefully enjoyed uh, disturbing the readers, you know, yearning for easy uh, solutions and closures. Just when he was beginning to portray Emma favorably, he would make an ironic remark that undermines her and that makes her more relatable, more identifiable and more real. Uh, Flavius novel ends uh, with pity and fear and understanding of ourselves and others as limited uh, beings uh, operating within a flawed world which is uh, uh, besides uh, the ideal values. The ideal values do not really uh, transcribe onto the uh, way our society, our, our uh, you know systems work. Uh, so, the consequences of human actions are severe and catastrophic and the socially set moral standards of a community are generally ruthless and vengeful. They are always uh, retaliating, they are coming back uh, to to uh, to uh, they are coming back on a person's uh, to to judge a person for her transgressions, transgressive acts. These themes are all present in the uh, novel. So tragedy inspires us to abandon ordinary life's uh, simplified uh, judgmental perspective. Uh, regarding failure, fiasco and defeat, uh, rendering us generous towards the foolishness and errors that are uh, ingrained in our own nature. So, like I said, human nature has its own uh, ridiculous dimensions. We are, we can be ludicrous, we can take absurd decisions in life and that is how uh, human life uh, as well as the society at large works. 
uh, it's uh, not a life straight out of the book when uh, Emma's life is precisely uh, the the gap between uh, you know the ideal romance read in the book and how uh, such romance works uh, in in real life whenever she tried to imitate the the heroines that he re that she read in her book um, it was a fiasco it was a complete uh, laughable failure right so uh, madame bovary is uh, hailed as one of the first classics by henry james and uh, and and uh, he says that flavius uh, uh, immaculate account of human bondage uh, that is revealed through his masterful depiction of the tragedy can be uh, well understood through the Norman bourgeois woman uh, Emma Bovary. So, the detail of the events leading up to the ultimate tragic catharsis of uh, Emma Bovary uh, uh, are amassed in the book stands as one of the great milestones in the development of the modern novel. So, uh, Flaubert makes it abundantly clear that Emma Bovary's uh, disastrous affairs, series of affairs with different uh, extramarital affairs with different males uh, began as a result of the books that she uh, was reading, uh, the, a, a number of uh, mediocre uh, romance novels from where she draws her inspirations. She starts emulating the romance heroines and which is why she became unfairly dissatisfied with the institution of marriage and ultimately began to feel uh, uh, the same way this as, as, uh, treat her marital uh, bond with Charles Bovary uh, with, with uh, so, some sort of disdain. She was frustrated uh, to, to be yoked with a man like Charles Bovary who was very mundane, very uh, you know. Uh, unromantic and unimaginative kind of a prosaic kind of a personality. So, according to Flaubert, Emma read uh, mediocre romance novels from a very early age, uh, which left her unprepared for the realities of marriage because uh, they painted some unrealistically rosy picture about love. The title of the novel itself uh, is uh, the the kernel, the seed of uh, you know tragic comedy is uh, present in the title of the novel itself. Uh, it justifies the tragic comic ends. Uh, we do not have the first name of the female protagonist in the title. We call her in a way that is socially and morally un uh, understood as correct. Uh, we do not call her Emma Bovary. The novel is not called Emma Bovary but Madame Bovary. So, Madame is uh, in the French tradition referred to uh, the married woman. So, we are trying to through the title itself, you know there is a desire to contain this uh, rebellious woman in a sense within the folds, within the uh, rights of marriage and she is constantly outgrowing it. She is too large for that institution, right. So, the title is something that she uh, can, she never wants to become and she can never become, right. She is married to an average medical representative and seeking an ostentatious life, a flamboyant life which is not suitable to her immediate social economic reality. And so, the entire plot is shaped around Emma's struggle with her identity as uh, Madame Bovary, uh, the, the Madame the wife, the counterpart of Monsieur Bovary, which she can be, she has become in the course of the novel, we see that she has become anything but Madame Bovary. She, uh, she has failed completely to fit into that image of Madame Bovary. So, th this is we see the kernel of um, you know absurdity, tra tragic comedy, the failure of marriage uh, uh, lies in that title itself. So, marriage is trying to contain her identity and she is constantly outgrowing its expectations, its anticipations. Flaubert was a bourgeois, like I said, a middle class Frenchman and yet he mm, despised his uh, own class and uh, you know to an extent the French values. For Flaubert, the French bourgeoisie could be a repository of the most extreme prudery, snobbery, sm uh, smugness, racism and pomposity. 
many critics and Emma's characters, uh, I mean many critics uh, uh, look at Emma's character as an alter ego of Flaubert who wants to become something else other than what his reality offers him. So, Emma Bovary's uh, lewd character, uh, sexual innuendos and uh, glorification of adultery were considered as you know uh, voluptuous and lascivious by the uh, establishment and in the novel Flaubert transforms the, the sordid materials of pulp fiction, the adultery suicide, suicide happening uh, uh, in consequence to adultery uh, into uh, a poetic masterpiece uh, and, and so he the entire story set in 19th century France uh, turns uh, a, a pulp uh, uh, a ready material of pulp fiction into a classic through the art of writing, through the stylistic markers and Flaubert's constant struggle with the writing. So, Emma dies in the end because she has attempted to make her life into a novel. She reads too many novels, she wants to become one of those heroines in the novel and it is the absurdity and impossibility of this quest that uh, echoes at the heart of the novel. The novelist mocks this heroine that he has created. Uh, so, everyone generally uh, you know uh, artists try to prop up their and support their protagonist. Here the author is mocking his protagonist, his alter ego and thereby he is in a way mocking himself. Uh, Flaubert memorably said that uh, he had drawn Emma Bovary from life and after himself uh, to quote Flaubert, I have dissected myself to the quick. So, Emma's drama is the gap between illusion and reality, the distance between desire and its fulfillment. So, on two occasions she is persuaded that adultery can give her the splendid life that her imagination strains toward and both the times we see both the affairs uh, leave her bitterly disappointed. So, the female protagonist's tragedy can also be read as lying at the crossroads of a class and gender positions. Uh, rather than a tragedy, uh, Mother Movery uh, can be seen as a case of tragicomedy uh, and incongruity, farcicality. Her, you know, her marriage is a farce, her, so are her, uh, you know, extramarital affairs. No, no meaning holds for too long. Uh, anything that uh, tries to uh, get a form, conceive a form uh, dissolves after a while, uh, dissipates after a while, right. So, while a male protagonist's persuasion and failure of upward mobility uh, would have bargained him a sorry image. Think of a Monsieur Bovary, think of a novel written with the title of Monsieur Bovary, um, where a man is uh, similarly trying to do a class jump, uh, he is uh, you know aspiring social upward mobility. Uh, but he is uh, unable to uh, you know achieve attain that kind of bargain it would have uh, you know uh, earned him a sorry image the, the readers would feel sorry for him uh, for his uh, misadventures uh, for his advances uh, or his uh, you know uh, persuasions uh, the fact that any we we see that traditionally the concept of class the category of class is typically reserved for and representing and represent and represent and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, the, the idea of class is uh, carried uh, through the traits and professions of the males. Classes are represented essentially by the males. So, a woman, a bourgeois middle class uh, you know woman intercepting this category of class attempting at a class jump and a resultant failure is not only uh, you know unusual, but it is absurd and it is comic in a very ruthless, in a very cruel way. A woman is not even supposed to uh, associate herself with a class. Class uh, is a class which is defined through socio-economic you know professional markers, which all of which are uh, you know imposition of men traditionally speaking. So, a woman does not work, she does not possess lands and homes. So, she cannot uh, represent a class, she is a partner 
of a man who represents a class. So, Emma trying to do this class jump is extremely unconventional, too ahead of her time and she earns some kind of laughter, she evokes laughter to herself which is uh, you know too ruthless to handle, too cruel to handle. I would like to stop today's discussion at this point and we will meet again for another round of discussion in our next lecture. Thank you.